Matt Paterini here with the Non-Traditional Pharmacist, part of the Pharmacy Podcast Network. Really excited about our episode today, a uh, topic everyone's talking about, technology, informatics. We're going to talk analytics. We're going to talk AI. We're going to talk big data. Uh, really, when you look at the field of technology in healthcare space in particular, uh, the number of jobs in the field is growing actually twice as fast as overall employment really due to a shortage of qualified employees available. But today we have no shortage of qualified individuals available. We have the wonderful, the one and only Wukash. And Wukash, you have a name kind of like Cher. You know, you just have to say Wukash and everyone knows who we're talking about. So excited to have Wukash on the program today. He is the clinical pharmacy manager of data analytics at New York Presbyterian Hospital. So we'll talk technology, health system informatics, and of course, get into how these things are changing and redefining the pharmacy landscape. So Wukash, welcome and thank you for joining. Thanks, Matt. Very happy to be here. Excellent to have you on. Uh, we'll start with the first question we ask all of our guests, which is give us some insight into your background in pharmacy, kind of your history and what led you to your role in informatics today. Sure. So. My background isn't really anything unique. Um, I did pharmacy school. I did residency, PGY1, PGY2, uh, specialization in informatics. So it's nothing that, you know, I, I, I created some type of crazy new technology and I got a position. It's, it's a very, very, you know, standardized process now in pharmacy for, for most specializations. So, and my background comes in when it comes to informatics is I had an interest in high school and programming and I actually never even thought of informatics as a career choice. Um, I actually wanted to do industry for a long time. It was only until I started looking at Appies where I was, I got more exposure into the topic of informatics and I started asking questions of picking and prodding and, and ask, asking around for more work during Appies that I really learned to fall, fall in love with informatics and things just start, kind of snowballed from there. Excellent. So you got into informatics kind of by chance, it sounds like. Uh, walk us through what pharmacy informatics is in general. Kind of give us an overview of what the field is like. So informatics is is a very interesting field because it's still very young and still very developing. There's not a lot of very concrete uh, def definitions out there, but if you ask what someone is an informatics pharmacist, they're going to probably give you a response along the lines of that they work on building or modifying an electronic health record system like Epic, Cerner, uh, Meditech, Allscripts, etc., and so what they do is they really try and bring the institution's culture and, and personality into an electronic health record system. So, and again, the definition is very variable because as my PGY2, I've worked with informatics pharmacists from all work, walks of life. So, and even myself, I'm a, technically a non-traditional informatics pharmacist in that I'm in data analytics. Okay, so we have a non-traditional role within a non-traditional role. Exactly. How, how do you see other areas of informatics uh, stemming from this? Uh, you're in data analytics. What mm -hmm. other areas are there? So I've, so in informatics, and again, it kind of, there's kind of overlap when it comes to pharmacy, because technically if you work on utilizing any type of information or technology to improve how the health system works from a technology perspective, you kind of can call yourself a little bit of an informatics pharmacist. So a good example was my medication safety rotation at, at my PGY2. Technically, the medication safety officer worked on creating uh, clinical decision support and alerts in electronic health record system. And therefore, by kind of definition, you know, he was an informatics pharmacist that way. Um, I work with informatics pharmacists in academia. I've worked with informatics pharmacists, or I, I know informatics pharmacists in, in healthcare in terms of the government, such as the FDA and NIH. So they're all over the place. Okay, so pharmacy informatics really can touch on each of the other areas in pharmacy. We talk about health system, um, governmental, regulatory agencies, industry too, no doubt. Um, but what about your role specifically? You're the clinical pharmacy manager of data analytics at, in a large health system. Uh, walk us through that role, kind of your day to day, and uh, and w what you do uh, for that health system. Yeah. So, so Matt, it's funny. A lot of people that I even work with ask me that role because it's such a a broad, broad definition. So I really work on seeing where the gaps are 
and trying to build a data environment where as a department we're trying to utilize the data we have in unique and innovative ways to serve our patients. So I work on everything from, again, operational to looking at medication use evaluations and working on um, different types of projects when it comes to financial. I even do some 340B, a lot of auditing of the standards of practice, uh, both pharmacists and physicians, even nurse and nursing. So I would like to say that an informatics pharmacist is good if he doesn't have to do the same project twice. <laughs> So I try to live by that. Fair enough. That, that's probably a good rule for everyone to live by. Um, what about logistically? How, how does the hours of working in a health system in informatics compare to other roles in the health system? Uh, and how does this work in your, uh, you know, kind of in your personal life too? So as you mentioned, informatics is such, such a growing field and it has so much involvement. I mean, there's, the hospital has no shortage of problems to solve. So I am constantly trying to go out of my way to get involved and, and put myself out there when it comes to all these problems. So, I mean, if, if, they, if they could, they would have me there for 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, and I, I'd be very happy because I'd be solving problems, which is one of, you know, one of the things I'd love to do is to solve problems. But it's, it's, it's very difficult to, to not get involved, especially if you have a um, a informatics personality, I'll call it, where you see problems and you really want to help and f try and figure them out. So I, I love my work. I define my, myself through my work. And so I work everywhere, any day from normal, normal hours to, to, to 10 p.m. If, if needed, uh, depending on project and deadlines. What are some of the really cool projects you're working on now, if you can share with us? just kind of overview at a high level, um, what some of the things you're working on right now. Sure, so uh, we have, uh, we call it FNT, other hospitals call it PNT. Um, there are requests for medications for specific indications, for example. Uh, I would take a look at the data and actually see if we have any type of um, benefit that's been shown for the medication or if the medication has previously been, been approved through uh, FNT and to see if actually been giving the, the benefit claims and outcomes that we're looking for with the medication. That's an example when I, look, when I work on the clinical aspect. When I look at, look at things from a financial aspect, I look at uh, are we, how's the pharmacy doing in terms of the initiatives that, we're, that we have in, in saving us money? Um, are we billing things correctly? I'm even working on billing um, medical procedures, MSDRGs, uh, 340B uh, for disproportionate share hospitals. You know, I'm trying to ensure that we're getting um, the appropriate amount of money that way. Uh, when it comes to operations, uh, one of the big things I'm working on now is in terms of looking at it, things from uh, are, we, are we following our medications correct, uh, appropriately? Are we able to be accountable for our medications throughout the entire medication distribution cycle, um, such as automated dispensing cabinets to ensure we have no expired medications that the, the units have the medications that they require and that the patients can be served on an appropriate and timely basis. Sounds like you're working on a lot of really cool things and, and spoken like a true uh, data informatics uh, professional when you have to say you, you look at the data. That's, you know, we love to hear that. <laughs> um, how does this role that you're in right now help you achieve your personal and your professional goals? So one of the best things about being in informatics and being at my level is that you get to work on problems that affect the whole institution. So I'm, I look at it from the perspective of I'm doing my uh, clinician duties as to try and serve as many patients as possible through this role. If I'm improving how an ICU can get its uh, vasopressors to its patients, then I'm going to be improving how those patient, every patient that walks into that ICU that needs it gets taken care of. So I, I find a great deal of satisfaction personally and professionally through um, my work. Yeah, I like that. It doesn't matter what role you're in necessarily. Um, every role is important and it's how can you be best effective in that role to best serve patients, uh, best you know, advance the profession and all of that. That's great, I like that. Um, we already talked about it a little bit, but what are some other roles in pharmacy informatics and we talked on some of them, um, but where do you see yourself maybe most interested in kind of as you move through your career? Mm -hmm. So yeah, so like I mentioned, informatics really can, can spread far and wide. 
I mean, you can say, like we talked about a little bit with medication safety, uh, you can even talk about drug information. You're supplying the correct information uh, to the people that need it, which to a certain extent is kind of my goal as a data, someone in data analytics is, you know, we have the data, let's turn that into information and let's provide it to the people that need it. So to a certain extent, you can, you can uh, say the DI is uh, an informatics role, uh, but in terms of where I, I see myself, I see myself to really try and focus on having hospitals work as, a, as efficiently as possible. So there's a lot of gaps when it comes to, uh, for example, finances. So that's, that's an, an interesting development I, I haven't had during pharmacy school. No one ever talked to me about uh, finances and, any, and 340B and how things are billed. But I find that to be an interesting piece of uh, healthcare because there's so much change going on when it comes to, to billing and there's just so much I guess out there when it comes to looking at things and assessing if the medications are are being we we are getting our money's worth for these medications and if the pharmacy department is actually um, showing the benefit and the outcomes um, with this, these medications and in the future I'd love to get into more outcomes uh, data analytics so I mean that's that's something that as the industry has yet to show to prove is outcomes and so that's something I'd, I'd really be interested in. Interesting. Do you think uh, that's where the industry is headed or do you think that's where it should head? What is your take on where we're going? So the industry should, everything should be going towards improved outcomes, right? You know, at the end of the day, we want to take care of, uh, with our, our patients as best as we can with, um, with the, the, the materials and resources and time we have. So Ideally, everything moves towards outcomes, and that's again where I'm, I see a lot of pressure being put on. Uh, the problem is that it's a very, very difficult problem. There's, I mean, many, many multi-billion companies have tried to address the problem, and it's been, it's been, it's been tough. Right. So, time can tell. Time only can tell. So, what, right. <laughs> what kind of problems I'll get into? You mentioned a lot of different aspects of pharmacy informatics. Really, very wide-reaching. Um, is there any one that you could pinpoint any one area of informatics uh, in the future that you think is going to be kind of the dominant definition of pharmacy informatics? So I think pharmacy informatics is still going to be li living a little bit in the clinical decision support aspect of things when it comes to the traditional informatics pharmacist. So the, 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 the software that's being provided by the vendors like Epic, Cerner, Oscars, Meditech, etc., they're all starting to become very, very good at all the different customization features themselves. But the, it's the clinical decision, decision support. So it's the alerting, it's the order set building, it's the standardizing of um, treatment. All those pieces where you can actually bring in your clinical and, e and your operational knowledge together as a pharmacist and really learn to apply it. So you're not necessarily programming the system, as many people have a false assumption of informatics is that they need to learn how to program, they're gonna program the system. It's more about building it in a certain way that um, an alert, for example, the physician will actually respond to and they won't re receive alert fatigue through it because it fires too often. And it actually be able, it was able to portray the most important information and have the most important outcome and result because of that alert, for example. Right, we've already kind of taken in large part care of step one, customization, electronic health record, um, you know, digital recording of, of information, but now it's kind of taking it a step further and how can we use that information that we have and make actionable insights on top of that, which is kind of where we are now and, and sounds like we're heading in the future. Uh, what advice would you give to pharmacy students or other pharmacists that are looking to pursue a career in pharmacy informatics? So, as I mentioned with, with my story, that as an Appy student, I really, that's where I really learned about informatics. I, I literally just Googled through APHA's website what type of career options there are through pharmacy and I just started scrolling through it because I wanted to adapt my appies towards whatever future goal I had. So I found informatics and really, really solidified my interest. Um, well, no, the app actually rotation solidified my interest. This, the, the definition of the research I did generated the interest. And so as an appy student, I really, really cannot stress enough go to all these different places uh, during your rotations and experiencing everything that they're doing 
and really putting yourself out there. You know, tell people what you're looking for um, in terms of like your career goal, you know, where you see yourself. You know, ask to have more work on the side after your, your responsibilities for that rotation are done. You know, try and talk and shadow people in informatics. So really put yourself out there. That, that's honestly a very, very, um, that's what I did. I got a lot of great experiences from it. And even every little, every little experience that you, you get when it's, you know, it may, may sound mundane, but it'll expose you a little bit more. You'll be a little bit more intelligent when it comes and it'll just keep building. For a pharmacist, I have great news. Most of the informatics pharmacists that are out there did not start with a residency in informatics. That's still actually very much not the traditional way of doing things. I know plenty of people that have done informatics right outside of pharmacy school and right outside of PGY1. So if you're a hospital pharmacist, really all you have to do is raise your hand, volunteer, show that you're interested and you're willing to work on you know, difficult te and technology-based problems. If you're not in hospital and you want to get into informatics, I highly recommend picking up a per diem, per diem shift and helping identify problems that you can work on during your time when you're working there and kind of bite the bullet and really understand you're not going to be doing this for the extra pay. It's going to be just for the exposure. A lot of good, lot of good advice there, Hukash. Um, I like how you, know, you stress the networking, putting yourself out there. We, we stress that all the time. So important. Um, and also, do you hear that, everyone? Uh, started with a, a very high-tech way to learn about this new career field called Google. And, I, <laughs> and Google's great. And Google's fantastic. Great place to learn a lot of stuff, get your baseline information. But Wukash, where would people go to learn more about informatics? Maybe some key resources that you could recommend to folks listening. Sure. Uh, if you're part of ASHP, they have a, a section for pharmacy informatics. That's always a great place to meet people, read about things. Um, HIMSS, H-I-M-S-S, uh, -S, that's a great organization when it comes to technology and healthcare. AMIA, A-M-I-A. That's a great organization. Uh, there's plenty of publications out there to, to kind of justify what we're doing as informatics pharmacists that, that they have different white papers on the different type of clinical initiatives that informatics pharmacists can take or what roles they can play in, in different teams and what they can help build. Again, clinical decision support. If you look that up, you'll find a lot of informatics-based um, like publications and all different, just different topics that you'll come across. And especially as a pharmacist or a student, you know, if you look at automated dispensing cabinets, barcoding on administration, uh, charge on administration, charge on dispense, all these different terms you'll come to know and use on a daily basis, you know, you can look more into and in, into the publications, just throw them into PubMed and see what pops up. You know, you'll get a lot of exposure that way. Uh, you'd be surprised how much reading you do during a residency. So I, I know they're out there. Well, that's great. Uh, Wukash, you have a very unique perspective on the field of pharmacy. So we like to end and conclude um, our episodes with, what do you think the future of the pharmacy profession is in general? So it's very difficult to predict where pharmacy is going, especially because we've been trying to solve the same problems and going after the same initiatives like provider status for a long time. So I'd love to see pharmacy uh, continue to grow which again, it's, I feel like it's had a little bit of a struggle to, in terms of growing and adapting, especially when it comes to an, a industry such as healthcare, which is only now starting to get really influenced by technology. And so I really hope pharmacy can keep up with it uh, and, and be on the winning side of technology. Um, but that's only going to be by uh, such as you, you know, going out there and, and working with other pharmacists and, and you know, bringing the community together to to try and solve mutually, mutually beneficial issues. Well, thank you so much, Wukash, today. Excellent, excellent take on pharmacy informatics, the field of pharmacy in general, the one and only Wukash. Uh, thanks for everyone for tuning in today. Please connect with Wukash via the contact information provided below and on the Pharmacy Network. And be sure to subscribe to both the Non-Traditional Pharmacist and the wonderful Pharmacy Podcast Network. Until next time, this is Matt Paterini with The Non-Traditional Pharmacist.